Good morning and welcome to this sacred service of ordination. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, focusing on verse 12. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Our subject for this morning is greater works. We come this morning for a sacred occasion of celebration. Those of you being ordained as elders are being sent by this annual conference and the church to lead the people of God in the United Methodist Church to be and to make disciples who change the world. Our United Methodist Book of Discipline says, among other things, that ordination to this ministry is a gift from God to the church. Although all persons are called to receive God's gift of salvation and follow in the way of love and service, some are set apart for the sacred service of ordained ministry. This is the ministry of preaching, teaching, and administering the sacraments. This is the ministry of nurture, healing, and equipping the saints for the ministry of the church. To such you have been called. To this call you have answered, yes, yes, Lord. Send me. At our general conference this year, the United Methodist Church made decisions that we trust will transform the world in good and helpful and positive ways. Transforming the world is a daunting commitment to consider. Yet as each of us take our vows of membership in local congregations, as others of us have taken vows of commissioning, ordination, and consecration, we have committed ourselves to this work. How does one transform the world? How does one lead into change people who don't want to change? How does one participate in the transformation of systems whose purpose has become self-perpetuation? There's not one answer to these questions, but many. However, I believe that Jesus shows us a way. Jesus was a leader of transformation. The world was transformed by his being among us. I would say that Jesus is the singular change agent of history. Oh, there's certainly been others who've helped the human race to look at itself and take a step forward. Theodore and Eleanor Roosevelt, Mahatma Gandhi, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., we might even add Barack Obama, and many, many others. But Jesus, Jesus turned the world upside down. He ushered in change and the possibility for transformation unlike anyone has done before or since. Jesus understood his mission to be that which was written by Isaiah centuries before his birth. He came to heal the sick, to give new sight to the blind, to set the prisoners free, and to proclaim that this is the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus' response to the social, religious, and political realities and injustices of his time was to do something. Whatever his vocation, his day job, his occupation was to make a direct and lasting impact on the life of every person he possibly could by demonstrating the power and the presence of God. Seeing the suffering masses as sheep without a shepherd, he became shepherd to them. 
Recognizing the hypocrisy of the Jewish Pharisees and Sadducees, he spoke truth to their power. Where government failed or abused, Jesus acted. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind and made the lame to walk again. Jesus took action. However, Jesus had an advantage that we don't have. Jesus was the son of God born of the Virgin Mary, offspring of the Holy Spirit. We're just ordinary people leading ordinary lives. Yet, it was Jesus who said to his disciples, those who believe in me will do the works that I have done and even greater things than these because I go to the Father. How can this be? Who are we to do greater works than Jesus? The scriptures remind us that through Christ, we too are children of God. The scriptures remind us that we are not alone, that we are sent out to transform the world because Jesus went to the Father. We now have access to our God in ways humanity never had access before. The scriptures teach us that greater is the one within us than the one who was in the world. Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is within us. Nothing is impossible for God. We can do all things through Christ. As you return to your ministries as elders in the church, I invite you to consider these possibilities. The great works of Jesus were born of heart-wrenching compassion. The impact of his works were grounded in truth. The power of his works was the result of love. Jesus had compassion on those who were suffering with disease, disease of the body, disease of the mind, disease of the spirit. He spoke truth to the Pharisees and scribes, naming the sin of their self-indulgence and greed and its impact on the poor. But most of all, Jesus' occupation for God was to be the conduit of God's love. And Jesus chose us to continue his works. You are well aware of the times in which we live, a time of great and rapid, unprecedented change. It continues, it gets faster, it goes on and on and on. You are aware of our times that are, that are so unprecedented and unpredictable. You're aware of the times of retrogression and progress, which uh, balance each other back and forth, and the swinging back and forth can be mind-boggling. We are still trying to address and to alleviate things like human trafficking and the lack of civility in the church and in the society. We are still praying for an end to wars and violence. We're still working to uh, end poverty and racism, sexism, homophobia, and addiction. We're still working to uh, conclude and to end economic injustice. Some of us are called to ministries of nurture and compassion and teaching. Some of us are called to ministries of speaking truth to power. But I believe all of us are called to the ministry of being conduits of God's love. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do the works I did and even greater works. So when we find ourselves face to face with resistance to change, that's part of the process of transformation. When we find ourselves face to face with people who are uh, fearful, let us keep our hope in Jesus. Let us remember that our job is to love the people and stay the course. Let us remember when we find ourselves disillusioned and ready to give up. Let us believe in the power and the love of Jesus so we don't grow weary with well-doing. 
when it looks like the ocean is too big and our boat is too small, remember Jesus can speak to the storms and they will cease. Remember, Jesus can bring dead dreams, dying congregations, and lifeless communities back to life. Remember that Jesus can say the word over here and fix it over there. You remember the centurion's daughter? He said, you don't even have to come to my house because I know if you speak the word that she will be healed. And it was so. Oh, yes, we can do greater works if we believe in the power of Jesus Christ at work within us, a power that is able to accomplish far more than we can hope for or imagine. It's not by our efforts that the works are done, not by our power or might. It is by the Spirit of God. What is this power? As I have lived life, I have come to believe that this power is love. God so loved the world that God sent God's only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus told his disciples to love one another. He said it would be by their love that people would know they were his disciples. Two things were shared with me early in ministry. Whatever circumstance or person you're ministering to or with, whatever you say, whatever you do, do it in a way that they are aware of the presence of the love of God for them and in a way that allows them to keep their dignity. Love the people, especially when they're most unlovable. Love the people, teens when they've lost their way. Love the people, couples struggling in marriages. Love the people, those with addictions, those who are afraid, those who are full of despair, love transforms people, places, and things. Through Christ, we, right here in Wisconsin, can live and give and love beyond all expectation. Love is according to some children who were recorded. Love is that first feeling you feel before all the bad stuff gets in the way. Love is what makes you smile when you're tired. Love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and listen. Love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends even after they know each other so well. Love, according to Peterson in the message, 1 Corinthians 13, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. Doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love puts up with many things. Love trusts God always. Love always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. And what I know is this. I am convinced that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor demons, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus loves. Jesus loves. Jesus loves. There is nothing greater than the love of Jesus. <music>